congratulations on your new role as chair of this Thank committee. You. I'm looking forward to working with you as well as with six new members of our committee. And Dr. Carson, thank you for being here. Be thank you. Before we get into some of the questions that I raised in my letter to you earlier this week, I just want to get an answer to, a, I think, a simple yes or no question. If you are confirmed to lead HUD, you'll be responsible for issuing billions of dollars in grants and loans to help develop housing and provide a lot of housing-related services. Now, housing development is an area in which President-elect Trump and his family have significant business interests. Can you assure me that not a single taxpayer dollar that you give out will financially benefit the president-elect or his family? Well, uh, Senator, uh, I was worried that you wouldn't get back. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> uh, I can assure you uh, that the things that I do are driven by a sense of morals and values. Oh. And therefore, I will absolutely not play favorites for anyone. Dr. Carson, I, let me stop right there. I, I'm actually trying to ask a more pointed question, and it's not about your good faith. That's not my concern. My concern is whether or not, among the billions of dollars that you will be responsible for handing out, in grants and loans. Can you just assure us that not one dollar will go to benefit either the president-elect or his family? It will not be my intention to do anything I, to, to benefit any, any American. I understand that. It's for all Americans, but everything may, that we do. Do I take that to mean that you may manage programs that will significantly benefit the president-elect? You can take it to mean that I will manage things in a way that benefits the American people. That is going to be the goal. Uh, to, to the best I, you understand I, that. It, you it, if there happens to be an extraordinarily uh, good program that's working for millions of people, and it turns out that, that, that someone that you're targeting is going to gain you know, $10 from it, am I going to say, no, the rest of you Americans can't have it? I think logic and common sense probably would be the best way. Yeah, although we do have a problem here, and I appreciate your good faith in this, and I do, Dr. Carson. The problem is that you can't assure us that HUD money, not of $10 varieties, but of multi-million dollar varieties, will not end up in the president-elect's pockets. And the reason you can't assure us of that is because the president-elect is hiding his family's business interests from you, from me, from the rest of America. And this just highlights the absurdity and the danger of the president-elect's refusal to put his assets in a true blind trust. He knows, he, the president-elect, knows what will benefit him and his family financially, but the public doesn't which means he can divert taxpayer money into his own pockets without anyone knowing about it. The only way that the American people can know that the president is working in their best interests and not in his own is if he divests and puts his assets in a true blind trust. Transferring his holdings to his children does nothing, as the head of the nonpartisan ethics committee said just last night. Since the president-elect refuses to address this voluntarily, we need to pass the Presidential Conflicts of Interest Act that I introduced with more than 20 of my colleagues, which would require him to do so. So, with the time I have left, I just want to follow up very quickly on a letter that I sent to you earlier this week and that we talked about in my and office. I, and I appreciated that. Good. And I appreciated it, too. As you know, more than 7 million children rely on HUD for housing. Uh, 7 million people, many of them are children, <laughs> veterans, people with disabilities. Um, for many of these people, HUD is the difference between a stable home and life out on the streets. But one major problem that we talked about is lead exposure. And according to the most recent HUD study, 62,000 public housing units, nearly 6% of our total public housing stock are in need of lead abatement. 
You are a highly accomplished doctor. We spoke at length about the implications of lead and lead poisoning on our children. Can I just ask you to commit today that you will make sure that HUD resources are dedicated to dramatically reducing the number of public housing units where lead is a problem? Well, I can assure you that I will very much be working with you on that. Uh, 310,000 cases right now of children, each of which cost us enormous amounts of money. I don't think people even calculate that into that when we're talking about it. So yes, I will be very vigorous in that area. I, I very much appreciate it. Um, this is a particular problem for us in the Northeast. It is a particular right. problem in Boston where our housing stock is old. Right. And it is absolutely critical that we get the lead out of these housing units and that our children have a chance to grow up without being injured by our own negligence.